Finance and accounting are two important functions for ERP systems, but what are the top systems that can handle finance and accounting functionality? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys. And finance and accounting is one of the key areas that people typically leverage for their ERP systems. It's one of the core fundamental back office functions that are critical to make an ERP system work and to fully integrate an entire operation. But not all systems out there handle finance and accounting as well as others. There are certain ones that are very strong at finance and accounting and others that aren't as strong. So whether you're looking for a system that can help with financial planning and analysis, general ledger, general accounting, or treasury, tax, anything related to finance, these are the top 10 systems that you should be considering. Coming in at number 10 is QuickBooks. And many of you may think that QuickBooks is not an ERP system, and technically you're correct. QuickBooks is not a full-blown ERP system, but it is a very strong finance and accounting system, especially for smaller organizations that are just starting out to set up their books. Now, simply because of the mass adoption of QuickBooks on the small end of the market, as well as the fact that QuickBooks focuses on finance and accounting, those are two reasons why we wanted to include QuickBooks in our top 10 list. Now, the key strength of QuickBooks, in addition to the fact that it's widely adopted by smaller organizations, is the fact that it's flexible and it's easy to use. That's probably the biggest strength of the product. And that's why so many organizations on the smaller end of the scale use QuickBooks. The weaknesses are, first and foremost, it's not a full-blown ERP system. When it comes to inventory management and more robust or sophisticated reporting and predictive analytics and things of that nature, QuickBooks isn't necessarily the best option. It can also quickly become strained if you're a multinational organization with multiple tax entities and tax structures and that sort of thing. So QuickBooks can be good for smaller organizations, but certainly not as good for larger organizations, but given its simplicity and mass adoption, that's why it's number 10 on our list. Coming in at number nine is Sage X3. And Sage X3 is a full-blown ERP system that tends to be common within manufacturing and distribution organizations in particular. And the reason it's so common in those industries is because it provides MRP or master resource planning sorts of capabilities, as well as general manufacturing and distribution processes. But when it comes to finance and accounting, Sage X3 is fairly strong as well. And one of the big strengths of X3 is that it's a step up from a QuickBooks. So it's gonna provide you more robust enterprise-wide ERP capabilities. And it's also widely adopted in the mid-market. So it's still a commonly used system. Where X3 falls short, however, is if you're not a manufacturing or distribution organization, it may not be a good fit for you. But if you are in that space, it very well could be. The second thing is if you're a larger organization, a more complex, more diverse organization, you might find that you outgrow X3 over time and you might wanna to look to one of the bigger ERP systems in our countdown. But having said all that, that's enough to land X3 at number nine on our list. Coming in at number eight is Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. And Business Central is one of two Microsoft D365 products that are in our top 10 list. And Business Central is Microsoft's version of software that's built for smaller to mid-sized organizations. Its other product, D365 Finance and Operations, is built for larger organizations. It's a bit more complex, a bit more robust. We'll get to that later in our top 10 list. But Business Central is Microsoft's answer to say an Oracle NetSuite or some of these other smaller ERP systems that focus on the small to mid market. Business Central has the benefit of being a Microsoft product, which means there's a lot of organizations out there that can help you implement it. A lot of organizations are using the product and it has that Microsoft look and feel and flexibility that many people are used to. The downside is that many organizations quickly outgrow Business Central. Once you get past a certain point of complexity, diverse operations, and you have more robust needs, you might find that Business Central is no longer the answer for you. But if you're in the small to mid market, it can be a great option as it relates to your finance and accounting needs. So all that is enough to land Microsoft D365 Business Central at number eight on our list. Coming in at number seven is Financial Force. And if you're not familiar with Financial Force, Financial Force is a financial and accounting product that's built on the Force platform, which is part of the Salesforce ecosystem. Salesforce, of course, being the leading CRM system in the marketplace. 
But what Salesforce has done is that they've built not only a CRM system in Salesforce, but they've built an ecosystem around Force which is meant to provide third-party applications that can integrate with Salesforce or act as their own standalone systems. And Financial Forest is the finance and accounting answer to organizations that might be using Salesforce but are also looking for finance and accounting needs. Now, some of the benefits of Financial Force include the fact that it's on a Salesforce platform, meaning that a lot of organizations are on that platform given the high adoption rate of Salesforce and some of the related products. It's considered one of the more flexible products in our top 10 list, and it can be bolted on to a number of other third-party applications that are also part of the Force ecosystem. Some of the downside risks include the fact that, first of all, it can become a little bit technically complex to manage these multiple best-of-breed systems on the Force platform. So, for example, if you're taking Financial Force and you're trying to integrate it to Salesforce and some other third-party apps in the Force ecosystem, that can become very complex and might require you to have more IT competency than you actually have. Secondly, Financial Force is strong in accounting and finance, but for larger organizations that have more complex business intelligence and reporting needs, for multinational organizations with multiple tax entities and regulatory bodies that they have to cater to, it can be a system that you outgrow over time. But if you're in the mid-market, it can be a great option, especially if you're using Salesforce or other products on the Force platform. So all that being said is enough to land Financial Force at number seven on our list. Coming in at number six on our list is Workday. And Workday is a system that's been around for about 20 years. It started off as a human capital management or an HR type of technology. And in more recent years has really expanded its footprint to focus heavily on finance and accounting processes. And generally Workday is considered strong in both human capital management and financials. And a lot of organizations use it simply for financials and without even using the legacy human capital management functionality that it was initially built for. Now, some of the strengths of Workday include a few things. One is that it is a legacy cloud system. So it was built for the cloud. It's always been in the cloud. So you don't have this dynamic that a lot of other vendors have, which is they're trying to move their on-premise technologies to the cloud. And that's an important differentiator because for the last 20 years, all the R&D that's gone into the Workday product is still something that you can benefit from. Whereas some of the other vendors in our top 10 list started as on-premise systems and now they're investing a bunch of money trying to move everything over. So you tend to have some maturity gaps when you compare those systems to Workday. Now the primary downside of Workday is twofold. One is that it's not generally considered as flexible as some of the other systems in our top 10 list. Because it's a SaaS or a software as a service product, there's just less flexibility that comes with that. It's fairly flexible, but not as flexible as some of the other systems in our top 10 list. And secondly, if you are looking for something that can do finance and accounting really well, but you also want it to be able to do other things outside of finance and accounting, Workday is pretty limited once you get outside of HR and finance and accounting. So if you're looking for something that can handle inventory management or your warehouse management, your manufacturing software, Workday is probably not the best fit. But if you're looking for really strong financial and accounting processes and systems, along with potentially HR processes and systems, Workday can be a great fit for you. Now, another SaaS or software as a service based product that is in our top 10 list is NetSuite, and it comes in at number five on our list. Oracle NetSuite is a product that's commonly used for small and mid sized organizations. It's a product that's owned by Oracle. And it's a SaaS based product, meaning that it can be easier to deploy from the perspective of configuring and setting up the software. Some of the reasons why it's so high in our top 10 list is first of all, the adoption rate is very high. A lot of small and mid-sized organizations that have outgrown QuickBooks and some of the other smaller base systems step up to an Oracle NetSuite. It has a fairly easy to use user interface in that it's a cloud-based system and it's a little bit more intuitive than some of the on-premise counterparts. And it can be easier to get started with NetSuite than when compared to some of the other systems in the marketplace. Now, some of the downsides of NetSuite are first and foremost, it's lack of flexibility, much like Workday. It's a legacy SaaS product, meaning that it's not as flexible as some of the other products in the marketplace. The cost of NetSuite is generally a concern for a lot of our clients in that the long-term costs can escalate and creep up on you over time as you increase volumes, as you increase users and modules and that sort of thing. Those costs can escalate faster with NetSuite than some of the other systems in the marketplace. And finally, a lot of organizations outgrow NetSuite fairly quickly. If you're a high growth organization, NetSuite may just be a Band-Aid solution for you until you reach the need for a bigger ERP system. 
And probably the most important thing to consider with NetSuite and the biggest reason why it's so high in our top 10 list is because NetSuite is arguably the strongest at finance and accounting. That's what it's really good at. That's what it was built for originally. And when you get outside finance and accounting, it may not be as strong as other systems in the marketplace, but if you're just looking for finance, accounting, analytics, financial planning, that sort of thing, NetSuite can be a great option for you if you're a smaller mid-market company. So those are all things to consider and the reasons why Oracle NetSuite is number five on our top 10 list. Coming in at number four is SAP S4 HANA. And if you're a large multinational organization or an upper mid-market organization, SAP S4 HANA may be a great fit for you. And some of the reasons why it rates high on our list is partially because it can scale for larger organizations. It's a product that can drive a certain amount of standardization and repeatable processes, which finance people and accounting people tend to like. And it's also something that is a well-known product. It's the biggest ERP software vendor in the world. So those are some of the reasons why the product is rated high on our list. But just like every other system in our top 10 list, it also has its weaknesses. Some of the weaknesses include lack of flexibility. So it's not as flexible as some of the other systems that we've talked about so far. It's also very rigid and standard, which could be a good thing for a finance and accounting type, but that could be a bad thing for an operations or a customer service or a sales type. So if you're looking beyond just finance and accounting, SAP has both strengths and weaknesses. But in general, when you're looking at SAP S4 HANA, one of the bigger strengths that it has is it's strong in finance and accounting. And there's other SAP owned modules that can be added on to add additional capabilities around business intelligence, data warehouse, reporting and analytics and whatnot. So really look at the entire suite of products within SAP, not just S4 HANA, there's other products as well that can help you round out your financial and accounting needs. And the fact that it's built on the HANA database platform creates more of a real-time access to visibility to the financial and accounting data that you need. So those are some of the reasons why SAP lands at number four on our list. Coming in at number three is Unit 4. And Unit 4 is another system that has very strong finance and accounting capabilities, financial planning, tax, all that good stuff, but it tends to specialize on a small handful of industries. So if you're not in one of the industries that Unit 4 focuses on, it's probably not going to be a good fit for you. But if you are in one of these industries, it could be a great fit. Some of those industries include higher education, government, nonprofit, and professional services. Those are some of the bigger industry verticals that the product tends to focus on. And it's a fairly robust product. It can handle smaller organizations, but also scale for larger organizations. And it's reporting and analytical capabilities are strong compared to other systems as well. So again, if you're one of the industries that Unit 4 focuses on, this could be a great fit. If you're not in one of those areas of focus, then Unit 4 may not even be in your top 10 list. But all things being considered, all that we know about these different systems in the marketplace is why Unit 4 is number three on our list. Coming in at number two on our list is the second of the Microsoft D365 products, which is D365 Finance and Operations. And as the name entails, the specialization or the focus of this product is finance and operations. And Microsoft is particularly strong in finance, accounting, and overall analytics, and overall reporting and visibility into the operations. So if you're looking beyond just basic finance, accounting, GL type stuff, and you're trying to drill down and get better visibility into overall operations, FNO from Microsoft can be a great fit. Some of the advantages of FNO include the fact that it's a flexible product. It has that Microsoft look and feel. It integrates to other Microsoft products pretty seamlessly. And it can provide that sort of flexibility that a lot of organizations want or need as they grow and expand into new markets. Now, the downside of D365 FNO is the fact that, first of all, it's flexible. I said that's a strength, but it's also a weakness. The fact that it's so flexible sometimes creates an overwhelming need to over customize or over change the software, overthink the software when they're deploying it. So it can actually work against many organizations. Which leads me to a second weakness, which is if you're a larger organization that's trying to drive a certain amount of standardization and efficiency, repeatable, predictable finance and accounting processes and better controls within those processes, Microsoft D365 isn't always the best option because of that flexibility that I mentioned before. And then finally, the last thing I'll mention is that the Microsoft Dynamics 365 ecosystem is highly variable at best. There's some really good ones out there and there's some poor ones as well. So you really have to look carefully at what your implementation partner is or who your implementation partner will be 
But all those things being said are enough to land Microsoft D365 FNO at number two on our list. Coming in at number one is Oracle ERP Cloud. And actually, it's not just Oracle ERP Cloud, it's ERP plus some of the other modules that Oracle provides. And historically, Oracle as a product suite has been very strong at finance, accounting, consolidations, especially if you're a global organization, being able to address multiple regulatory and tax regimes throughout the world. Those are all strengths of Oracle ERP and some of the associated products that they provide. An example of a product that fits well with Oracle ERP to help enable finance processes is Oracle FCM, which stands for Financial Close Management. And Oracle FCM is actually a continuation of a product they bought several years ago, which is called Oracle Hyperion. And Hyperion was a great tool, a very common tool that was used to help with consolidations and closing the books and really looking at a global view of your financials and rolling those results up to the overall P&L results. So that's just one example of another Oracle product within the Oracle suite that can enable some of these strong finance and accounting processes that I've mentioned. Some of the other advantages of the product include its flexibility, the fact that it's commonly used throughout the world, and some of the downside risks include the fact that it can be a bit complex for some organizations. It could be overkill if you're a smaller to mid-sized organization. And the fact that Oracle is not known to be the easiest vendor to work with in terms of contracts and licensing and subscriptions and that sort of thing. But having said all of that, that's enough to land Oracle ERP Cloud at number one on our list. Now, for more information about some of the other systems in the marketplace, as well as the ones I've talked about here in this video, I encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report. This report contains a number of independent software reviews in a number of different functional areas and industries, as well as reviews and best practices and other things that are meant to help you as you continue through your digital transformation journey. I've included a link to that, as well as other resources that I think will help you in the description field below. So be sure to check that out. I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.